what I need. This Mass is offered for the 40th anniversary of Francis Conway, asking God Almighty to continue to sustain her in his eternal kingdom. And we equally pray for other deceased members of the family. I ask you, dear friends in Christ, to equally add your own private intentions. All our intentions we bring before the table of the Eucharist as we begin this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, my dear friends in Christ. Amen. Today we have all gathered to thank God for the gift of life. And today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. The readings today invite each and every one of us to have hope because Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us therefore acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess unto you, my brothers and sisters, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. in the same charity with which out of love for the world your son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God Forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this. I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. As you will know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people, I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have done and said this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive 
to the voice of my pleading. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord, more than watchmen for daybreak. Let the watchmen count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, Israel indeed he will redeem from all his iniquity. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, Unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life. Because you have been justified. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then... He who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to John. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with the two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was healed. It was the same Mary, the sister of the sick man Lazarus, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sister sent this message to Jesus, Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory. And through it, the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet, when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to his disciples, Let us go to Judea. The disciples said, Rabbi, it is not long since the Jews wanted to stone you. Are you going back again? Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours in the day? A man can walk in the daytime without stumbling, because he has the light of this world to see by. But if he walks at night, he stumbles, because there is no light to guide him. He said that and then added, Our friend Lazarus is resting. I am going to wake him. The disciples said to him, 
Lord, if he is able to rest, he is sure to get better. The phrase Jesus used referred to the death of Lazarus, but the thoughts that by rest he meant sleep. So Jesus put it plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, because now you will believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, known as the twin, said to the other disciples, Let us go too and die with him. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he would grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in a low voice, The Master is here and want to see you. Hearing this, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house, sympathizing with Mary, saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress with a sigh that comes straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept, and the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did believed in him. And this is a gospel of the Lord. Be 
Good morning, my dear friends in Christ. Today, I woke up with a little bit of confusion, and I know that it happens, or uh, many of us seated here had the same experience. I had my wristwatch just by the side of my bed, and my phone far away from me. Usually, I woke up by 7 o'clock just to do some small exercise, then 8 o'clock say a little bit of prayer, then prepare and start coming to church. So when I woke up, I look at the time. I said, oh, I still have time. I relaxed. Something said to me, just check your phone and um, see if you have any message. I stretched my hand, pick my phone, and I look at the time. I was like, this is not the time I saw initially. I kept the phone. So it struck me again. I had to pick the phone and look at the time. I picked my wristwatch. I was like, what is going on? I never knew that the clock has changed. So I had to reset my, my, my wristwatch. I came downstairs, looked at the clock. It was still giving me a wrong time. Then I knew that the clock has changed. And I know that many of us had the same experience. But that aside, dear friends in Christ, today, the reading presents us with a very powerful team. In fact, the foundation of our belief, the resurrection. In fact, that is the epicenter of our worship, the faith we hold so dear. Christ conquered death. It is the resurrection and the life. You will agree with me, dear friends in Christ, that death, though the reality of death comes with sorrow, it comes with pain. The pain of losing someone so dear to us. It comes with that, that gap that is created because the person we lost definitely created a vacuum. And sometimes when you sit down and reflect and think of those wonderful moments you share together, it comes with pain, it comes with sorrow. But I want to remind you, dear friends in Christ, just like what John said in John chapter 10, that Jesus Christ came that we might have life and have it in abundance. Yes, he has conquered death. Now, the darkness of death, at the end of it, there is what we call the light of hope. No matter how little the light can be, it is the hope of a better life. That now we are not afraid of dying. Because we know that after this life, there is a better life. But even while still alive, we can still enjoy that life with God. That is why Jesus Christ said that those who believe in me, even though they live, they will never die. The fire of that God's love in you will never be put out because Christ lived in us. Remember what happened in Genesis. We are created in his own image. It simply means each and every one of us, we carry with us the image of God. Why should we be afraid of death? The Lord has conquered death. It is the resurrection and the life. He has conquered that darkness and pain. But let me quickly point out from the gospel reading today some disturbing realities. Number one, Jesus Christ heard the message on time when Lazarus was sick. It is not that the sisters didn't do their job. They did their job. They sent message to the Lord. The man you love is, is ill. So definitely they wanted Jesus Christ to come down quickly and heal their brother. That is why the two of the sisters made the same remark. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't, wouldn't have died. But they did not say that remark to spite Jesus. They did not say that maybe to downgrade his 
personality or omnipotence, but they say that to let the Lord know that they have faith in him. That is why Martha added, but I know that whatever you ask of the Lord, he will grant to you. Now the question that I ask myself, why would Jesus Christ stay back when he heard the message? Why did he stay back? Naturally, he would have still up. Run down because he loved Lazarus. So that you will see and believe. So from that statement, I want to think that maybe he wanted the people now to believe that God truly sent him. He has performed wonders in the past. They might have doubted him. This was not the first time he raised the dead. Remember what happened when he raised the uh, dead child of uh, Jairus, a 12-year-old girl. Remember what happened when he raised a young man from the city of Nine in the Gospel of Luke. And those resurrections or those miracles happened immediately after death. They just died and the Lord came and woke them up. So probably the people did not believe. They might think that the two people didn't actually die. Maybe they just fainted or they might be in coma and they didn't actually believe that he raised the dead. Maybe because of that. So now the Lord stayed, stayed more extra days. So you could not say that Lazarus had been in a coma for four days. According to the Jewish custom, he had already been buried and he had stayed extra four days in the tomb. So by now, it should be decomposing. So you could see the reason why when the Lord woke Lazarus from death, many of the Jews believe. The question I ask myself, dear friends in Christ, how often have I doubted the power of God in my life? the Lord continue to present us with reasons for us to believe. How often do I doubt? How often do I doubt my brothers and sisters? How often do I doubt others? How often do I doubt the ability and capacity of others? I think the message today is for us to have that trust and believe in God. Because he has conquered death for us. And finally, dear friends in Christ, Lazarus spent four days in the tomb. For me, I believe that it doesn't matter how long you've stayed in a situation of sorrow or pain, but when Jesus comes into the picture, he changed that situation for the better. No matter how long we have suffered in the past, no matter how long we've faced sorrow, all we need to do, like Martha and Mary, we need to believe. And that great miracle will happen in our lives again. Dear friends in Christ, the death that we should be afraid of is not the physical death. It is the death to sin. We should be afraid of the death to sin, not the physical death. Because the Lord has conquered death and has given us new life. But sin costs a serious death in our life. And that is why the Lord continued to call each and every one of us to the ocean of his mercy. We pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will strengthen us as we have come very close to the celebration of Easter. I will want to conclude with this hymn by if
Vaughan, God of mercy and compassion, and I want us to take it together, just the first standard, um, the first hymn and the chorus, number 180. One eighty one zero. Yeah, one eight zero. I want us to take the hymn together. God of mercy and compassion, look with pity upon me. Father, let me call thee Father. This I try with us to thee. Jesus, Lord, I ask for mercy. Let me not employ I now the thirst and never we lie sin again. May the good Lord bless his words in our heart through Christ our Lord. Let us now rise and profess our faith. We are going to take the longer form, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invincible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from God, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we made, for us men and for our salvation, who came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was seen and by the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered there and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Who is spoken through the prophet, and believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the Lord of the Son. The prayer of the faithful. Brothers and sisters, our Lord calls us to trust him fully and promises new life to all those who believe in him. Let us approach him with faith as Martha did and offer him our prayers. For the church throughout the world, God our Father, guide us as we bear witness to your word and strengthen us in our efforts to heal this world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Jesus, hear us. Lord Jesus, lead us and protect Pope Francis and his all bishops and priests as they look after your children that your love may be manifest in their actions. We pray for our con consecrated brothers and sisters, and we thank you for their example of trust in your providence. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We bring before the Lord all those who in times of war and conflict work for peace. God, 
we bring to an end all wars, especially in Ukraine, and heal the rifts existing between so many communities. We pray in particular for Nigeria and Kenya, for South Sudan, and for Nicaragua and Colombia. Lord, hear us. We continue to pray for all mothers and all children. Lord Jesus, protect all the expectant mothers and those shortly to, due to give birth. Enlighten the minds of our leaders that with their decisions, they will seek to support all families, especially the poorest. Lord, hear us. We thank God for the people of our parish, both living and dead, who have strengthened our faith and may we carry that light to others for the rest of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our parish community. We hold in our hearts those who are ill and housebound. We remember especially those who have died. Lord, you know their faith. Give them the gift of resurrection. Lord, hear us. Please add your own intentions. Lord, hear us. Let us now pray with Mary, the Queen of Peace as we all say the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace the Lord, Lord is, is with you. Blessed are thou among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus, you promise us new life. Your cross and resurrection gives us certainty that death is not the last word. Strengthen this certainty in our hearts, and give us your peace, especially in times of sorrow and difficulty. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the swine that you offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Hear also, mighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. You, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. I indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the two brethren gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spirit throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Leo, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, your servant, Father Mark Anthony Obikili, and Miss Prudence, who celebrate their birthday, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them will offer you the sacrifice of praise. They offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Remember, Lord, your servant, and remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Frances Conway, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Dear friends in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold, Jesus Christ takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I know what you may be from my youth. The fruits of the Lord and the sweet to me.
are now going to take the scrutiny before the post communion prayer. Martha is profoundly sad at the death of Lazarus, but is tinged with a touch of blaming Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Where do I resent the losses in my life and somehow blame God for them rather than seeing them as places where God's glory will be revealed? Even when Jesus tells Martha, I am the one who raises the dead to life, she finds it hard to believe he means now in the case of her dead brother. Where do I doubt that Jesus can bring life? Jesus stands before the tomb weeping. He places no barriers to his feelings about death. Could he be staring at and facing the tomb of his own death? Can I be with him there? Can I stand before and face the tombs in my life? <clears throat> Jesus shouts the liberating words of life, Lazarus, come forth. How is he shouting that to me today? The grace will come when I experience how my deaths will not end in death, but in giving glory to God. When I experience how entombed I have been, tied and bound, no longer alive, dead for a long time, I will sense the power of the command of Jesus that I come forth. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please, may we just be seated just for a while, just a brief announcement. I have two points to make. First is on a note of thank and appreciation to thank each and every one of you for your active participation and continue to pray that Almighty God will bless each and every one of us with a wonderful day today that I can see we have a bright sky even though you don't trust the weather in Scotland but we just believe that the weather today will be okay I also want to thank um, the altar servers. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you. The musician, I thank you. May God continue to bless you as well. For the readers, thank you, and God bless you. Then secondly, tomorrow being the 27th is the funeral of uh, Michael Callahan. It is going to be on PSC Cemetery and it is a graveside service. It will commence by 2 p.m. 
we we'll continue to pray that the Almighty God will comfort Jim, and also that the soul of Michael and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. The Legion of Mary today will be having their harsh years, the time where when legionaries renew their commitment through the Holy Spirit to the Blessed Virgin Mary. It will take place at St. Catherine's Convent by 3 p.m. Number four, Lauriston Garden. If you check the newsletter, you will see the address for all legionaries who want to renew their, their commitment. The time is 3 p.m. Then on that same note, we did announce about starting the Legion of Mary here in our parish. Some of the members of the courier came, talked to us, and some people indicated interest by writing down their names and contact. As we did announce, announce last week that today after mass, those who indicated interest will put down their name, and those who did not put down their name and they still have interest to join the Legion of Mary, after mass will just wait behind and discuss the right time to start the Legion prayer. That is when that will be the time that will be suitable for, for all of us to have the, um, the Legion prayer meeting, if it is on a Monday, on a Tuesday, or on a Sunday, and the time that we need to start. It is not a decision for me to take, but it's a decision for those who indicated interest to look at the time that is best for them and say, this is the time that is best for me within the week, and I think that by this time of the year, we should start the Legion of Mary. We continue to pray that God will strengthen us, especially through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. The Lord be with you. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Amen.